Okay, well, in which case uh, we move on to John Stewart, a very close friend of mine for, for many, many years, I would have to say, uh, and one whom uh, I've cooperated with on numerous occasions, and he's an enormous support to the Henry George Foundation uh, here in London that meet in, the, in, uh, in this building. Um, so, but I suppose I'd better read, since uh, Alana's given it to me, John Stewart's bio. It says here that he was introduced to the principles of economic science in 1958 in Suffolk Street, London 8, which was then the HQ of the School of Economic Science, and was hooked right from the beginning. A close association with the economic faculty continues, and in 2001, Standing for Justice, the biography of Andrew McLaren was written, inspired by the teaching of Henry George in Edwardian Glasgow. McLaren became a lifelong advocate. In an endeavour to explain this teaching and put it in reader-friendly form, the ideas of a sci-fi novel entitled Visitors evolved allowing aliens to explain their economic teaching. Not just their economic teaching, I might add there, because there's a lot of philosophy in that. A second novel followed, entitled The President, wherein the US President asks three questions. What is location value? Who creates it? And to whom does it belong? Those that we've used time and again since hearing that first from John. The third, Easy Read, came out in 2010, titled The Prime Minister, and tackles the application of the principles. Now, I don't know whether John is... Uh, uh, has actually brought along his books to actually show here. They're obviously all outside and Anthony might have something more to say about them. But I would love to have been able to hold those up. But maybe John's going to do that. But very welcome, John. Lo looking forward to hearing what you've got to offer us this morning. I haven't got the books with me. <laughs> um, Oh, here we are. Oh, yeah. My publisher. <laughs> um, I'd just like to echo what Jacob said, uh, you know, is young people, um, touching young people early is vital. Because, can you hear me all right? <laughs> I, I, allegedly, I speak softly, so I... Uh, anyway, um, to, yeah, to, for young people to get, because I, I benefited from that in 1958. It totally changed my life. I used to think that the trade unions were the worst people on earth, and everything was blamed on them. But after a couple of weeks at Suffolk Street, I, I changed my mind, and I, I realized there was other things. And um, I think th this is opportunity, as Jacob was saying, to be given to young people at an early age. To get the foundation is very important. It certainly was to change my attitudes considerably. And um, trying to just, you just speak up a little more and write in the mic. Oh, I'm still too. Yeah, is that better? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I thought I was shouting. <laughs> That's when you're singing, John. Oh, I John's see. got a wonderful baritone voice. He yes. used to sing for us. Uh, yes, those were the days. Anyway, um, um, yeah, what are we going to say? Wonderful things. Um, yes, the, the, the biography of Andrew McLaren, I was very fortunate, actually, in, in being quite close to Andrew McLaren. In fact, I used to drive into Suffolk Street uh, for a Saturday morning lecture, and we became rather like two naughty boys. Um, I do remember one time, uh, just to give you the intimacy of the situation, walking through Harrods, and we thought he was a bit blind, he couldn't see very well, and um, that's, that's the book. <laughs> And there was two ladies coming towards us with very floral dress and dresses, you know, and he said, what's all this wallpaper? <laughs> <laughs> so I smiled and walked on. <laughs> anyway, there we are. 
But he, he, was, he, he was a phenomenon, really, between the wars. And um, you get a, a touch, if you read this book, you, you get a touch of that. Uh, well, more than a touch. And in 1931, um, the a land value, a land value t a tax was passed, actually, um, with by Philip Snowden, al albeit not not uh, very comprehensive, but still it got through. Um, but of course, the crash came and folded. So why why did I? Um, write these books. Um, well, I was... It was the idea of getting, a, getting the principles over to people in a very simplistic, simple way. Not simplistic, simple way. For modern life is extremely complicated. Everything is complicated. If you, if you dare to work, you're taxed and you're hammered by regulations and rules. So um, it was the idea of getting a simple message across that uh, got this book going. And it, it, um, there's not much to say about this book. I can I could go on about it. I, sometimes my memory disappears in such occasions, but. Uh, it, they were aliens coming from another planet, and they had. Uh, they were asked, "How did they collect their taxes?" Oh well, we do this. Do this. Oh, oh. So anyway, this was the first introduction, and to give you an idea that um, the chief, uh, the, the uh, chief elder uh, of of this planet, and this planet was. Uh, uh, sometimes the, the sometimes the position fell vacant because they couldn't find someone of sufficient humility. And um, this word humility, I think, is one that um, needs to accompany our pursuit of this subject. Um, now, after after visitors. Um, came the president. I'd been to Washington and knew a few of the ins and outs of the place, and uh, and it was uh, based on an epiphany with the chap got, uh, and his driver was a was a Georgist. He's a Georgist. <laughs> And uh, one day he got talking to the, the prime uh, to the president, and uh, suggested he might read this book. So the whole relationship started. But what emerged in that book, I think, was um, the simplicity of the three questions that Tom has already mentioned. And I've been seeking in the book to try and put across the simplicity. It's something that the people could understand, no matter who they are. What is location value? Well, everybody knows Mayfair is Mayfair. In fact, if it wasn't Mayfair, it wouldn't be Mayfair. <laughs> um, bricks and mortar are the same price in Cornwall as they are in, in, in Mayfair. So what makes Mayfair so special? So location value is, is a key factor. And... Um, who, who creates it? That's the next question. And people puzzle over this. And that to whom it does belong? Well, that's a little tricky. <laughs> Especially if you have a nice little patch somewhere. So the, these three questions are the basis of this book. In many ways, this is my favorite book because it does put these three questions across in a, in, a, in a simple, straightforward way, and a humorous way as well. Um, now, when I, when I got to uh, Prime Minister, um, I was endeavouring at the time, it was a time really of the crash, and things were really bad. 
And I remember going into Hatchard with this book, and and um, they said, oh, this is, they looked at the thing, it, it was so current, it was unbelievable, as though that previous uh, indication of what was going to happen. Which of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so they immediately put the books, they put the books in, right in front of the pay desk. You couldn't miss them. But they didn't sell. That's interesting, isn't it? They just didn't sell. So I said, it's, it, 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 it's, it is, um, well, they sold, you know, fine, they sold up to a point, but they didn't sell. They had to eat, not me, Hatcher thought they were going to sell, but somehow they didn't. But this, this book, of course, goes, goes into the detail uh, of the whole thing um, and brings out again the, the simplicity as opposed to the complication. Because we seem to love complication. And uh, so that's really, in a sense, about all I've got to say. Because it's the simplicity, it's the simple principle. It's the principle, these principles are, in fact, I have in the, the Prime Minister saying in a bit, don't think you're going to do it, it's the principle that's going to do it. It's a principle that's got the power, because it, it is um, grounded in reality. And uh, so, now what else should I say? I think I've said enough. So if you, uh, I can... That's fine. Yeah. John said plenty in, uh, in that, but the one that I picked up on in particular, and I thought it was particularly in, uh, useful in connection with the uh, talk that Alana gave us this morning with regard to the qualities that are required of a good leader. Humility, John mentions, which seems to fit in exactly with what Alana was indicating. One that is, going to, that is going to be followed, that it will enable others to lead because of the humility. Um, and I think that's a very interesting area that we might want to explore later on, Alana, with the, with the whole thing.